click is ETG. Eat the goose. Yeah, intro introducing the two racks a week challenge. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. What y'all need some proof? Just watch my videos, man. Video and then, you know, just showing all your 2500, 2500. I said, okay. All right, that's what I can get with that. 68 hours, so it was $2,075.16. I work like 70, I don't remember, like 73, 74 hours. I made uh, like 3,400, close to 3,500. I made $2,001. 60, 62 hours and I had uh, 20, 2400. Introducing the two racks a week challenge. All righty, all righty, all righty. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have another winner of the two racks a week challenge man here we have mason mason give a quick introduction let her know which market you're driving in and which platform do you drive on well ronnie thanks for having me and yeah my name is mason and uh i drive for uber only i was doing lyft for like a couple months the year but mainly just uber okay yeah all right, now how long have you been doing it? Um, probably around three years. Three years. Yeah. All right, three, not too shabby. Three good okay. years. Yep. All right, yeah. So for you've been doing this for three years, so I'm pretty sure that you a uh, couple thousand trips in. But um, you know, the audience probably want to know what the hell were you doing before you start to drive Uber um full time or you do it? Yeah, I assume you do it full time, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I do it full time. Yeah. So what were you doing prior to you driving Uber full time? Well, before I was driving Uber, I was uh, I was working multiple jobs before it was like a law office for like a couple months. And uh, it was like it was like a temporary job. Um, and then before that, I was working at an Amazonian warehouse the yeah the worker stuff uh, for like nine months until I just got burnt out and I was like I need a job like a good job mm. um, so yeah I mean I was doing these whole hourly jobs like anybody would and like I worked at a law office for a couple months and didn't really get laid off or fired they just let me go and just because I guess I wasn't the right candidate, but also because their business was falling apart. So it was kind of a bummer and just looking for jobs was just a hassle for me. And then my friend was just telling me one day, like, yo, why don't you just try Uber while you do your other side gig, which uh, is playing guitar. Okay. And, and uh, see how that works. I was like, never thought about it. And yeah, so that's how the Uber journey began. I was doing Uber Eats only. Okay. And then, like, I was switching cars and got a newer car, a, a Prius. And okay. Yeah. Yeah, that freaking helps for sure. Um, and then uh, that's how I got the rideshare gig going. But, yeah, before I was delivering food, making good money, more than the law office job for sure, and Amazon. So I'm not going to lie. It was pretty dope. Okay, all right. So just to confirm, you was working at the law office, the Amazon. Yes. Amazon. Amazon. Yes. The office. You said they they fired you. Not they didn't laid you fire up. me. They just let me go because uh, they were trying to find uh, actual paralegals as well okay. as receptionists in the mm -hmm. law working firm, and I came in as like a random dude with a college degree. And, you know, with kind of experience in the, in that field, as far as like international stuff, because this was like um, international law. Okay. And oh, damn. Work, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's some serious stuff. But, you know, they got me in there as like somebody who can just work and do something and has a college degree. Right. And, and knows the language because it's all immigrants coming from uh, Central America okay. crossing the border and trying to seek asylum. 
So, yeah, I was just trying to help my boss, a.k.a. the lawyer, uh, to, you know, set up court dates and, you know, call these clients constantly to make sure they do their payments. It was just so much stress. And I, I was just like, good. And they really liked me, but they were just saying, like, you know, I think we found or they were just saying, like, it's been an honor working with you, not like trying to say directly you're fired or even then they weren't saying that they were just saying like you know i think we're just moving on to finding another direction of like our business because we were falling okay. apart so yeah right, right. Yeah, what, it was, yeah 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 damn that's a that's a lot what were some of the one how many hours uh were you working there and what were some of like the the stressful you know things that you had to deal with you know from that particular job well I was working, I believe, like from 10 to 7, so probably around 8 hours. Yeah, 8 hours. Okay. 11, 8, 10 to 7, 8 hours. And, uh, yeah, the stressful thing about the job that I was in was just um, time, deadlines, and, like, having to get it done. You have to, like, my boss and then my other boss who is a paralegal as well she she's like the leader of the paralegals she was mm -hmm. saying here are the folders you take them these are the names of the people you contact them you research what what they who they are and why they're in the u.s and you do a declaration start up the declaration by interviewing them talking to them contacting them. like so many like just looking at the person but I think the most, yeah, deadlines. Get it done by this date and the next week. And if you don't get it done, it's like everybody has to get into that one person. And I felt like I was kind of that person because I had no idea what the job was being like a paralegal, <laughs> even though I've watched Suits like a couple times. Mm -hmm. It's a good show, but it's it's not my forte. I didn't study law. I, I studied international relations at college. So it's a little different, but. Okay. It was still worth the experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, cool, man. You know, now we got a little bit of backstory because, you know, people <laughs> try to figure out, like, damn, like, how, like, what would make somebody or what's the attraction that somebody may have that, you know, transition to driving Uber and Lyft, especially full right. time? Because if you tell people, to, oh, yeah, I work for, a, you know, a law firm, they'd be like, oh, you know, people automatically associate that with uh, with success. But then uh, how was the transition when you were telling, you know, friends or family members, you know what, like, I'm about to drive Uber. Like, what did what exactly did they say about that? That's a great question, Ronnie. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it was my friend's idea that encouraged me to do Uber uh -huh. because he's also a hustler like I am. Mm -hmm. He like drives a lot um and so he's saying you have a peace of mind if you do uber versus the office job and i was in doubt with that but then i was like okay i'll try and then yeah i kept along with it and then my family members when they found out i was just doing it full time and enjoying the job some of them were like uh well the taxes, uh, you know, don't you have to pay so much on taxes? Right. Um, mm -hmm. Typical ones, right? Or like, um, aren't you going to like destroy your car with like all the bear and tear and stuff? stuff. Like, yep. yep. And I think, um, you know, there's so many things. I mean, it's just family. That's how they are. Right. Um, they, they worry about you. They care for you. They love you. But mainly it was just like, all the maintenance fees they were worried about, as well as like, is this going to be your job forever? Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Right. But of course, I'm I'm doing it because it's like it's stable for me in a sense. And then mm -hmm. my friends, um, they did Uber too. I have friends who drove Lyft and Uber and other rideshare apps, um, so they're familiar with it. But most of them are not in that kind of mindset like I am where I, I like to work hard and I like to work at my own pace and work at whatever time and work 
when I feel like it, but even then work when there's opportunity, you know, not like a regular nine to five job Monday to Friday. And then you go your weekend, drink your beer and party around. Right. I mean, it's fun, but at the same time, like, you know, there's, there's extra room to grow in the work field. Um, even in the weekends when most people are partying and uh, yeah, most of my friends did it and they just like, decided to continue the office job and similar mindset with my family where I was like, I don't know if it's going to be stable for a while, but my look of it was, I, I didn't care. I just wanted to keep working on myself every time. Mm. Yeah. I like the fact that you, you know, you mentioned that, that you have to definitely, you know, uh, work on yourself because if you don't work on yourself, you know, those negative thoughts start to get in and, you know, yeah. you got people's opinions that may, you know, affect your your outlook and you like, damn, man, maybe they're right. You know, you start to doubt yourself, but you right. constantly have to, you know, work on yourself. Um, Absolutely. I think, yeah. you know, hearing hearing your, your background, I think a lot of people would be able to, you know, relate to your to your story, you know. Right. Even though people never worked at law firm, but a lot of yeah. people can relate to the Amazon uh, where you was at an Amazon warehouse, right? Yes. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people can can relate to that. Just you know, normal factory job. Because I've talked to so many people who who are at those jobs, and like, man, you know, I got to get up out of here. I'm wasting time. There's no room for growth. Uh, maybe I don't like my boss. It's other opportunities, <laughs> other things yeah. that I yeah. can do. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I want yeah. you to like briefly, you know, talk about that. What are some of the changes? that you had to make, you know, within yourself to be able to, you know, drive, you know, full time? Well, oh man, there's so many changes I made. Uh, first of all, I had to really adapt to working on my own because I was so, I was like everybody else working nine to five, so used to like, getting up at a certain time to get at yeah. this place. Mm -hmm. Time, 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 time was a thing. And then when I did Uber, it wasn't a thing. It just was then taking away that and kind of relieved my stress. But also, I think what really I had to adapt to was like socializing with people, uh, you know, when they talk about what do you do for a living? Like, I don't, some of my friends, they don't really say they do Uber because they're afraid that and when you do say you do uber people look at it as like that's not a real job or that's not a career mm. that's not you know and and i didn't care i will still say i do uber to even a ceo or somebody higher level than me i don't know but right, the right. point is i'm honest and i tell people who, what i do for my own time being and so that was something that i had to adapt and accept my own thing mm. Um, and because I'm a young dude, I'm 26 years old. I'm so like young. I'm a kid. Hold on, and, hold up, real quick. Let me let me pause right there because you mentioned such a, a interesting point. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people they do feel that it's kind of like a a fear for a lot of people or an embarrassment. Why do you like? Why do you think that is? Like, why do people feel <laughs> like it's not a real job or you know they kind of are like skeptical or hesitant to tell somebody that they drive Uber or Lyft? Well, well because um, I look at it as we're so used to like, everybody's so used to the regular social dynamics as far as like, if you're a engineer, doctor, whatever it may be, you're gonna be wanted by a lot of people. And so it's like kind of connected to society Mm -hmm. But I think what makes people embarrassed is because Uber is not that way. Uber is just you work on your own pace. You're an independent contractor. You you literally are on your own. You're your own boss. Mm -hmm. And most people look at it as like that's impossible. Like, mm. you know? and I think that um, that is why. Get in deep with that and especially people my age. We're all structured to get a college degree, get a job. You have a job, you like it, or you don't. You talk about your job, oh, yay, yay, nay, whatever you may be. A lot of uh, 
but mainly it's a lot of like, I don't like my job, to be honest with you. Most kids, they get a job that's not related to their degree, but they just get something. But I think that what it is, is just like people don't, people overestimate the value of their own time mm. as well as their own pace, freedom, and as well as you can make good money doing Uber if you work hard. Right. And you have time for yourself to go to the gym or mess around, meet people. Like, that's what I do every day. Right. Um, it really helped me. Um, but of course, yeah, there were some things that I had to accept and adapt to, um, like the timing, like I said. But then I think the other thing that really uh, I had to accept is like most of my family members, they weren't taking me seriously in that sense. They'd just be like, maybe he's not disciplined in his life. He's not focused or whatever it may be. Um, and like, he's not busy, let's say. Oh, he's not a busy man. He's always free. They look at busy as like the wanted person. I mean, for sure, but you can be busy in your own way. You know what I mean? Right, right. No, I 100% so, agree with that. You know, a lot of people... They look into this with uh with ignorance, which is which is fine because they don't know. Yeah. You know, they have a like their lifestyle is structured over, you know, yes. structure with a job. You know, you yeah. show up at a, a specific time, you work on specific projects, or you do the specific task, maybe yeah. you have company happy hours, uh yeah. company parties, and you repeat the process. Like you know exactly what's what time you got to be at work, what time you getting off, what time you taking the lunch, uh, when, yeah. when you vacation yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I've, and I've heard someone tell me like, when I asked them, like, what do you think about, you know, like Uber drivers or, um, you know, especially if you dating, you ask a girl, like, what, like, what do you think about, <laughs> would you date an Uber driver? What do you think about Uber drivers? And they'll tell you, you know, like, like you said, they don't, some of them don't look at it as a real job or as something in between, or maybe you're not focused or, and, uh, or, or things like that. And it's like, yeah, yeah I, I could definitely see that. that that's it's yeah. interesting that because a lot of people aren't really, you know, focused and structured and they just doing this, like, yeah. oh, I'm be my own boss. And they end up, you know, working less hours than they would at a normal job. So I definitely, you know, get that, but there yeah. are, you know, ways to make money. And, you know, there are other opportunities from doing this. Yeah. And I want to debunk this too, because a mm -hmm. lot of like the, the, the conversations that I have with people, I even tell pretty girls uh, that I, I do Uber. And even if they look at it as funny, we still hang out. We have fun. You know, my friends and I, you know, like I said, I don't hide. I don't hide what I do. Right. I, I, I do show my life publicly and if they don't like it, then that's on them. But also like, even then people, I mean, here in San Diego, people are friends. Yeah. So I, I, I have a different kind of look on that in that environment, you know, because people here are very like open-minded. They don't care a lot about like your job stuff. Right. They, they right. That's before you are. And that's amazing. That's mm. like helpful. But, you know, again, like any anyone that I meet in the streets and socialize and we talk about our jobs as like some kind of topic in our conversation, you know, they'll ask me like some of them will ask me, oh, how do you make do you make good money doing Uber? Oh, right. cool. Or like uh, what's your craziest story about a drive or the passengers? Same shit, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I tell them, and yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. Like right. most of the people are very lenient and cool with like hearing me, you know, doing Uber here, but yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, real quick, Amanda, you know, you can make this into something fantastic. It's all depend on your mindset, your goals and um, your attitude. Mm -hmm. Because some people may look at it, oh, well, it's not a real job or, you know, they take 70%. It's just all a bunch of, you know, negativity. And you're going to find it. Whatever you search for, you're going to find it. But if you look for, you know, like the positive aspects, okay, let me get out here. 
I'm on my own time. Yep. I'm not tied to a office or a cubicle or, you know, no. I don't have to deal with, you know, upper management for, for dumb shit. It's yeah. all on me. Then you get out there, you get a consistent schedule. You start to structure your life. You know, you start to have fun with it. And you like, at the end of the day, it's the exact same thing as a, as a job. You wake up, Correct. you know, you, it's just all on you. You're doing everything for yourself. You're being self-sufficient. And that's a lot of people can't handle. And I don't know. I think people feel more, I guess, get more comfortability or acceptance. Yeah, that's where acceptance if yeah. they get a job. So then they, when those conversations come up, so what do you do for work? Oh, well, yeah, you know, I work for this company. It's like they get to fit in and feel like they are uh, a part of the tribe. And to me, it's kind of, you know, like sheep like mentality, which is fine. But, you know, everybody don't have the personality, you know, to do this. So I completely understand. Yeah. I think <laughs> this is for people who have greater ambitions and want to look for something outside of, you know, the typical, you know, nine to five, go to work and work at this job, even though if you like it or don't like it for 20, 30, 40 years, then retire. This is for, you know, at least my channels for like more ambitious, you know, people. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like that about what you do. Like, I think it's great that you're, you're putting content about like, you know, uh, you know, challenging drivers that make 2k a week, um, that kind of thing. And just like, breaking the norm of what the reg regular cycle is. I think mm -hmm. that's awesome. Plus, you know, every human being is, is abundance in their interest in learning what they do. And for me, for example, right, I play guitar. I love playing guitar. You know, I, I am also trying to like work on my side gig as far as like guitar wise, I'm trying to coach people, learn okay. like, level guitar and, and when you mentioned like the guitar in your intro, I think that's pretty <laughs> dope. <laughs> but yeah, I love I love playing it, and I share my content on Instagram all the time. And I also go to open mics, and it's just like I, I think what it is is just focusing on what you love doing for your everyday life. And it it was if it wasn't for my friend who encouraged me to do Uber, then it would be a different story. But now I'm doing things I like more and you know, like my, my happiness, my health and, you know, wealth are going to grow over time. And mm -hmm. which is, that's part of life for me, I think. Nice, <laughs> man. And I, you know, I like hearing that, uh, before we even, uh, you know, get to, uh, the money aspect, yeah. you know, let's talk about, I guess, like the, the overall, like, uh, I even hate using this word, the whole mental health and like the happiness, you know, aspect, because I, even though I hate it, I know how important it is for a lot of people, you know, because a lot of people, they feel trapped and they feel frustrated at a job, but they know this is the most consistent way mm. that they could, you know, make money because they don't have any, any skills or they don't have like no interest. So they, mm. and it's like, they stay trapped. Yeah. But now you just like, you took a leap of faith, but all right, I'm gonna listen to my friend. I'm gonna drive Uber. Yeah. Like this one, I'm a rock with. Yeah. Once I, you know, uh, got to that, uh, that mindset or that point in my life, you know, and I start to drive full time, I just felt free, man. I was just like, so happy. You know, I was just, you know, like it was just more joy. Like, was it the same for you or just like, damn, maybe I made a bad decision because I felt liberated. Honestly, I think I felt more like confused in mm. the sense of change, but at the same time, like it took me time. Months later, I felt happier actually. Okay. I felt happier because I was able to travel to places that I haven't been. So when I was doing the Uber Eats gig, I was making good money, but then I was traveling to cities in the U S haven't been like, I went to Denver for a week. It was awesome. Mm. Um, never really met no the plains and the rocky mountains i've always been in the coastal sides of the u.s and then i went to mexico for two weeks and uh and then later in the year i went to europe for two weeks and like my one of my roommates is like 
telling his friends like, "Yo, this guy's traveling and he does Uber Eats and he does Uber." Right. And, People are like, "What?" You know, it's like I literally get my time off with traveling because I love traveling too. That's like my other interest, along with playing guitar, is going to different places, being very nomadic. Um. So yeah, I went to Europe for two weeks. It was really awesome, and you know, more travels up ahead for sure. But like, that's something that I really loved about doing this this gig is like, you can travel at any time. It's not like a typical Christmas holiday, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, all this BS holiday stuff that people do. Um, and literally for me, I just travel at like random times. And okay. that's even better because like tickets are cheaper, I think. And <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Like I'll go to freaking, I don't know, somewhere in Asia and I'll freaking find the cheapest one at the best day. That's like not much people going there, you know, but right. that is something that what made me happy about the Uber gig was just being able to go to places and not have to tell your boss, Hey, I need PTO. I need uh I need vacation time, all that stuff. I mean, and then literally uh, stay at hostels and just yeah. meet people. And yeah, it was just, it's, it's awesome. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, absolutely, man. It took you me know, time, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I could definitely, you know, understand that. Because um, everybody have like a different transitional period. Yeah. And, it, and a lot of it depends on like what your your uh goals outside of making money are yeah because like once people transition it's like of course like yeah i want to i want to make more money cool i know people driving i have a car i can get out here and just make money but then it comes a time like damn what am i looking to get out of this like what's the next step for me like yeah. what else can i do and you'll just start to you know find ways to enjoy start to set you know more goals and yeah. i think a lot of it is you you, you start to have certain conversations with passengers and they'll just inspire you to to do different things but oh damn that sounds like a cool idea let me let me check this out or uh yeah. let me check this restaurant out or let me travel here or let me put this place on my on my bucket list so yeah all, all the passengers that i've had so far like most of them were were uh you know they also like wanted to get me get to know me in the personal level Mm -hmm. um i'm a outgoing person overall i love talking to people right. so i mean I, I enjoy getting to know random people but one, one thing i really love about like even the passengers is just like you know i don't know if it's a thing but i i usually you know try to contact them like on the side let's say text message like about like my music stuff or maybe he even let's let's hang out or let's do this that's happened to me plenty of times but i think one thing i really do like is like they're all just great pass passengers polite to me and mm. and um really i think most of them just treat me i think that that's what's something that's really awesome because you know, other nine to five jobs, I think, in my opinion, based on servicing and restaurants, mm, man, I, I've experienced a lot of rude customers, <laughs> rude people, right, right. but Uber, it's different. It's, it's really different. Yeah. Most it, of them are it, really yeah. polite because all the, all they're doing is just going through the day on their phone. Right. Some of them don't talk and some of them just want to reach to the destination. That is amazing to me. Right, right. No, I, I, I hundred percent agree with that, and um, yeah, because people, it's like they want this crazy story, and then like, uh, what's the crazy? Like I said, I get that question. What's the crazy story? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I really have to think. I'm like, man, it would have, it would take me a while to really think about what's the crazy story, or um, do you meet interesting people? I'm like, not really. I mean, most <laughs> people are not interesting to me. It's like, right. Once you, yeah. Once you've done a few thousand trips, like people are just normal, like they go into work, people they on their phone, yes. they listen to music, they yeah. take them business calls and they get out. Every now and then you may meet somebody that's interesting, meaning that they have a different story or they've done something unique. Yeah, absolutely. That's what makes it interesting. 
those are one of a kind. Yeah. Um, you barely get those, but for sure. Like, I mean, one, one thing I do have to understand Ronnie is like when people complain about uh, just how expensive California is or even expensive yeah. in general, how everywhere in the U S like the way I look at it is like, Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I kind of have to play along with it to just then let them vent. But for overall, right, like, right. it really does drain me because, you know, complaining know you is, is, I try my best to always stay positive. And right. when I do get complainers a lot, it's just like I have to play along with them and just let it be. Right. No I, know, I know exact, man. I know exactly. Yeah. They're just complainers or they yeah. just so negative and it's like their, their, <laughs> yeah. their worldview is just so different and like, damn. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you kind of do want to play into it because even I catch myself, I'm like, let me let me just shut up because I'm going to say something that's, that's going to piss them quiet. off. Yeah. So I, let me just play into it. Or let me switch topics. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh man. All right. So now man, let's 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 get to this money, man. Because people are like, all right, man, y'all been talking. Like, we want to know, like, you know, how much did he make and like how did he do it? So before we even get to, you know, you earning uh yeah. two racks a week, um, you know, talk about, you know, the weeks prior to, you know, that building up. Like, what was your highest you know, earning week uh, prior to you making this $2,000? Honestly, that's the highest I've made, Ronnie. Okay. That was the highest. So I am okay. so proud of myself, have myself on the back. Literally, it was the highest I've ever made. Never thought I would make over that. But uh, I think before that, let's say the highest I've made, honestly, was probably up to 1.4K. Okay. Literally. Right, but pull up your... Yeah. Okay, so it says uh, 53 hours, 37 mm -hmm. minutes for $2,637. Let me show it right here. Should focus. Bam. Yep. So y'all can yes, see sir. it right there. Yes, so sir. Then, like, people going to be like, damn, that's a big ass spike on Friday. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, talk yeah. about that. Yeah, no, I was pretty fortunate too. That was something that was also kind of like a luck too for me at the end of the day mm -hmm. but i all it is is a healthcare stipend okay um, i don't know if other states get it but california does like a healthcare stipend yep. where you work certain hours you get like this amount of money back to you um so i worked like up to i think was it 170 97 hours total like the, the before the period ended and once the period ended they said you know we're gonna you know, send that to your uh, Apple wallet or whatever it may be. Yeah. And then, yeah, out of the blue, just popped in there. I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, was was that the the $1,300 one or like 600 Yeah, so it was like the stipend was, I think, um, the, oh, 1600 Okay, wow. Oh, damn, $1, Oh, okay, shit. Not oh, but that also adds to like the day I work. But I think it was. Like oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think it was like fourteen hundred when I when I. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so that mm -hmm. really boosted up like my earning throughout the week. But you know, it was it was awesome. On top of that, like I had days where I was working two hundred dollars per day. You know, and like anybody, like. Mm -hmm. We don't make up to like over two hundred dollars every day, but we do our best, and that's basically what I did. And that stipend okay. was like an extra whew, for hard work I put in from like the last period. Exactly, I was just about to get to that point. Uh, was that your was that your first time uh, receiving a healthcare stipend? Yes. Oh hell yeah! Hell that yeah! Shit, that that's, that shit feels good. Trust it me, really I remember does. the first time I received. I'm like, oh damn, and um. I, Maybe I probably made like close to like three thousand a week with, you know, the healthcare stipend. Oh yeah. Um, so congratulations on Thank you. you know making two racks, you know the the easy way. Because some people they gonna I know they gonna probably hate. So I have something negative to say. Well, 
you know, most of it is from the healthcare stipend, but who cares, man? Two racks, who cares? Is two racks. Two dollars, and, yeah. and like you said earlier, you got it because all of the other hours prior to the to the end date. The work so I, I did. I think it's mm -hmm. three hundred and twenty eight hours for okay. that. Um, like for that, you know, pay period for like three months, or whatever. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay so okay. you was consistent enough, you know, to from. Uh, within those three months to to get yeah. that so exactly hey, job, you know job well done so for the people it's like the people who are going to hate that's fine yes. but two racks is two racks and also they complain about oh we want to make money easier then when you get when you earn a healthcare stipend then you get it and they'll still still not gonna be happy so you can never win mm -hmm. but um hey two racks like i said it's two it, racks it's, it's over. It's above two racks, and and to be honest, it was like whoa, great. I'm happy, but you know what? There's always another room for me to grow, and so mm. like I it, I can make another two racks this week as much as I can and do the best I can without the healthcare stipend. It's just it's all about patience. It's all about putting in the work and doing the best you can, but learning from your market, like every other driver would say. Right. Right. And, and and I like the fact that you uh, keep uh, mentioning like the growth aspect because yes. you know to me that's that's like really try to preach on my channel. It's not even about. I mean, of course, it's about making two racks a week, but it's more about you know the growth, you know the mindset, mm -hmm. you know the that individual challenging themselves, you know uh, creating new standards, and yeah. you know and living and ultimately you know living a better life. Because mm -hmm. once you, you know, start to readapt and quit your job, now you got to you got to figure stuff out. Like, All right. How can I be disciplined? All right. Bam. I'm going to wake up at this time. Now, now I have to be consistent. Now I have to keep up, you know, with my finances. Now I have to save a little money just for like car repairs. So now it's like you teach yourself all of these certain skills, regardless if you realize it or not. And you actually using you know, your brain power. So you are actually, you know, growing. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. There's always room for to grow in any anything you do. And that's yeah. that's my mindset. Every time I, I apply work of anything. Right. So now, like, what's the what's the vision for yourself now? You know, you're driving. Yeah, I know you uh, you stated that you, um, you know, like to play guitar. Yep. Think about, you know, doing some coaching. So, you yep. know, what's next for you? What's next for me? Good question. Um, well, as I continue on with this Uber gig, my goal is to get uh, people to pay into my coaching services that I provide for my guitar. Okay. And once I get more paid clients, I mean, eventually we'll see how the Uber thing goes. But, you know, like this is just – you know, my source of income as well as then playing my guitar, performing like a rock star here and, uh, and, you know, just save up. That's basically my main aim is to save up. And once I get all that, then travel the world, go to places I've never been and, right. you know, connect with people, play music. And I think one other thing too, is like, I, I definitely want to buy some homes for my, family as well as like for myself um, my sister has a has a son and I want to be around him um, okay most of his life as I start growing more income and you know yeah be there for my family and travel and just play lots of music but also get lots of paid clients and therefore that's where I be killing it <laughs> hell yeah I like that man I like that Thank a lot you. and yeah. um you know, that's that's what it's about, man. Readapting, you know, visioning, you know, and levitating. Um, like I mentioned earlier, most people they don't have any goals. You know, that's why they stay, you know, stuck at a job or just you know, stay stuck in life. You know, they fail mm -hmm. to set meaningful goals that are tangible and that that's true to them. You know, it's easy to get distracted with stuff on the internet because there's so many ways to make money. People, they want to, some people, they want to day trade. They want to try this. They want to do this. They try to do three, four different things 
all at once, but does it fit who you are, your interests, your personality? And, you know, yeah. that's, you know, that's what you really have to, you know, figure out. That's everybody have to figure out. Yeah. yeah. Like when I'm, when I'm me personally, when I'm driving, I spend a lot of time, you know, thinking like, damn, like, what do I want to do? You know, I've been thinking about this, you know, prior to I've, uh, you know, made my channel, like, what mm-hmm. did I want to, to do long term? And, um, you know, you can do a lot of self, you know, reflection and, you know, introspection if you actually care, or you could just sit in the car pissed off and try to ask everybody what they paying for this trip and see how much you get in and, you know, you end up, you know, going uh, nowhere, you know? No, I stay tunnel vision on that. Like, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in, in this whole, like, what everybody's doing in their lives. It really yeah. is because, yeah. you know, we think that, like, another thing, when Uber gets slow or when things are not in your favor in the sense of, like, money making or even day by day, we tend to think a lot about like, what are we doing with ourselves? And yeah. And then, yeah, we start asking people, cause you know, I understand where people come from, but I think I, I readapt an approach to just focusing on may I curse one word. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Focus on my shit and mm. literally just stay in my lane the best I can mm. and eliminate most distractions as much as I can too. Like I know that we pay attention to a little bit of details, but at the same time, it's okay to just be mm, and like laser focused on yes. your goal. <laughs> yes. It's, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that a hundred percent, man. Just staying, you know, focused and keeping, you know, the eye on the prize because like you said, man, stuff times could get slow, then you start to question yourself, you start to doubt yourself. Absolutely. And that feeling it it's uncomfortable, but it also is good yeah. if you look at it that way because it can it can help you grow like when times get tough it's like all right like how can i win and how can i come up on top maybe you know life is trying to you know tell me something different all right let me uh if it is slow which in next couple months maybe like around january or so yeah. it, it might be a little slower and it's like now like what are you going to do now i could spend or now you can spend more time focusing on your outlet, like what you plan on doing long term. You mm. know, focus on focusing on that instead of just squandering, you know, a bunch of time, which which is mo- which is what most people do. You know, they squander time. They just sit there, you know, play a bunch of video games, watch Netflix I know that. <laughs> or a bunch of sports. Then it's like, damn man, I watched you know a whole fucking TV show you know, 120, 80 episodes, whatever the case may be. And it's like, damn, imagine if you to use that 45 minutes per or hour per episode, you know, 60, 80, 100 hours to really focus on yourself and, you know, build yourself up, you know, start that business that you want to start, you know, get yeah. that, you know, the job or the education or the skills that you said that you were going to do. And, yeah. you know, that's what, that's the, you know, most important part. Right. I, uh, I think that like what re- really happens a lot with the entertainment stuff, like the video games, like I love playing video games too, but my main thing is before I start playing video games and fucking around that kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, I, I get my main goal done, which is yeah. to make this amount of money throughout the day. All right. Like make 150 or maybe even 200, maybe even more, depending on how the day goes. But, it, it, you know, it's like I will not do nice, th- nice things for myself from the beginning until I actually get it done. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, and then I can mess around. Like, like I have surfing that I do, play video games, hang out with friends. I have all kinds of, like, free time like every human being does. But until I get my goal done, throughout the day, then I'll do all that stuff. Exactly, man. Yes. Yeah, and it's and it's it's rock structure, structuring uh your day, your week, you know, what do you have to do? The most important things. And you yeah. can still do everything because a lot of people are like, oh, I have, you know, no life. But it's like, uh, is that true? Like, are you really working that hard consistently? 
that you can't right. do anything. And if you are, please show me because right. you could, you could do everything that you need to do. You know, you could work, uh, you know, work out and maybe have like a hour, hour and a half, two hours to, you know, wind down, play games, whatever, or whatever, whatever you like to do in your free time. I don't know what people like to do. Right. You know, right. so it's about, you know, structuring. Uh, We're human. Things we probably. all, yeah, we yeah. all have, you and I have free time in our hands. It's, yeah. it's, it's okay. It's just, yeah, using it wisely is more important to me. And I have roommates. They want to do things for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll like set up a time with them or we'll do something together. They're very acceptable on my schedule since they work a nine to five and I don't. But mm -hmm. we, we, we work things through because that's the most important thing is your priority. And mm -hmm. that's why people get lost too a lot is because they're not getting the actual work done. Mm -hmm. Even if it's hard, you got to get it done. doesn't matter. Okay, exactly, man. Uh, we're gonna have a couple more questions before we get up out of here. Like, um, the people that's gonna be watching this video, I mean, it's, mm. we getting close, uh, the end of 2024, transitioning to the beginning of 2025. Uh, people gonna probably still be thinking, like, damn, is it, is it still worth it, you know, to drive, you know, Uber and Lyft? Like, and what would you, not only is it worth it, but can they still make two racks a week? Hmm. <laughs> that's a great question i think it's really up to them i think mm. personally it is it's cool to do uber and lyft i like it but i the people can speak for themselves honestly i would love to speak for them but people need to figure out themselves if they really like to do it or not because like it's really you know each and own one, one's lifestyle. So I think that over time, I think next year, it's going to be the same thing. You can make two racks in Uber with something, whether you work 60 hours a week or 80 or four, like you were mentioning in your videos, or, you know, get the healthcare stipend like I did, <laughs> right? Like yeah. there's something, there's always going to be something happening in the week um, throughout each month, you know, but it is worth it. It definitely is worth it. Just for the people, you can try it. Um, it's fine, but it's not for everybody. I know that for sure. It's it's people don't like to have a lot of free time uh, on their hands. Uh -oh. Like to literally wake up early, have all the morning done, and then I work. Uh, my own stuff which is playing guitar and then i get back to work in the evening a little bit and i make good money right which is amazing right no no man I, I like the fact that's one of the best answers i like the fact that you mentioned they have to figure out who they are and yes. their interest yes and what they want to do and the type of lifestyle that they want to live i mean the money is out there but it may not be for you this may not be you know your best uh way to make two thousand dollars or the best way for your for yourself that you want to work maybe you want to work and do something totally different yeah and that's fine yeah yeah uh, it's yeah it's 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 i can influence people to do it though i mean um <laughs> i really would like to but all right yeah let's 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 go that way let's say somebody already got their mind made up like you know what damn it this is the best route for me to go like i've seen all these videos i you know, I've been watching <laughs> Ronnie's. We have been watching the two racks a week challenge. Right. I would love to share. Like, I would love to. Nah, I want to. Yeah. Nah, I want to yeah, do it. You know, this is it. Challenge people. Like, you know, um, there's a lot of cars where I'm at. So you got a car, you can drive. Um, do it. Just do it even, anyway, even if it's uh, if it's like so ridiculous. Yeah. Like. It could be ridiculous because, like you said, the mileage, the gas wasting, but do it anyway and see see what you think. If if you like it, that's amazing, you know? Yeah. But if you don't, that's okay. Yeah, I'm you won't lose. You you, def you definitely won't lose. You're going to learn, Absolutely. but you're not going to lose. In my <laughs> yeah. opinion. Exactly. You're going to learn, and most importantly, you're going to learn about yourself, man. Because yeah. it's totally different because – even from a psychological perspective, let's say you want to, your goal is not, let's say not even make two racks a week. 
let's say a goal is just to make a thousand. Mm. If you make a thousand, you're gonna feel good about yourself. If you don't make a thousand, to some degree, you're gonna know that you fucked up or somewhere or that you didn't right the, the the amount that you said that you were. And if mm. you really care about your about your life and if you have some integrity, it's gonna bother you. Like it's going to bother you bother you like, damn like i didn't I, I didn't execute or i didn't hit the thing that i wanted to hit that's good and yeah it is good because now i you like got a decision like fuck I, let me go out here let me try harder let me do better and then that's where you overcome that milestone you finally hit the barrier making two racks or you just don't care anybody well it didn't work uh i'm a i'm a point the finger on uh, you know, they take this amount or they do this and, you know, I just got no normal job because it's just easier. And like, okay, well, fine. I mean, you're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I into the whole adversity and pressure because I have, I've always had to work hard at everything I do. Um, mm -hmm. it, thanks to my dad, not going to lie. He, he really trained me in that brain mentality of work hard uh, I guess nobody cares. That's probably the right way. But even then, work hard at what you do. And even if you're not, like, I guess, um, reaching your goal yet, still put the work. But, you know, it's all about, like, you know, just, uh, like, like, the right word of it is just, it, it's really hardcore discipline. Mm. You just got to get out there and do it anyway um because no one's gonna give it to you you got to put in the work right that's it exactly you have to put in the work and uh before we get up out of here man any you know last words of encouragement anything you want to leave them with uh for the drivers who haven't made two racks or the new people that's on the fence because i think a lot of people are probably on the more so on the fence they're you know that maybe they're at a warehouse or a factory yeah. and contemplating wow. on damn man i'm tired of my boss if he say or she say something else i'm just out of here like fuck it i'm about to just quit on the spot maybe i'm thinking about doing uber i, I know it could work but i'm scared i'm unfamiliar what would you say to them quit your job <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding i mean yeah sure quit your job i would say um, uh, don't give up, you know, if you're Uber driving and you're not making two racks yet, still keep going and look for opportunities. Like bonuses are big in, in each state. Um, and always look for some kind of like money making throughout the week, but yeah, don't give up. Find what like what really helped me is understanding my market. Um, look at the hours that are busy. Usually it's early in the morning or in the evening. Work in those hours and you know, take I do take reserve trips as well. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Um, that's actually how I start my morning is through reserve trips. They Uber texts me like these things before no opportunity. I yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Even if it's like you have to wake up 40 minutes yep. prior, <laughs> I don't yep. care. I'll still go. The best part about it, too, is you'll get a trip beforehand. So you still make more money, even if you're waiting for the guy at a certain time, right. you know. But, yeah, always look for opportunities. Don't give up. And um, and if you, you know, and so the whole humor that I put there, if you don't like your job, yeah, go, go try this. This is really the real deal. And I, I I was just like everybody. Like I had moments where I was just unsure, but I kept going and I was always believing in myself, at least trying to make more money than I made last week, two weeks ago. And it, it, it really pays off. That's pretty much it. I agree, man. And I'm, I'm going to follow up with that real quick. Yeah, if you're on the fence... If you're not happy with your current situation, it's never too late to change. Yeah. Um, I can't say you should or shouldn't quit. Um, I like to give people just the, the tools or equip them with the tools and they can make their own decision. Like you're an adult. 
um, start to use your brain, man. Think about the life that you want to live. Think about, you know, if you do stay at your job, what are the pros? What are the cons? What are the benefits? Is it something that you see yourself doing long term? Is there growth uh, at the place that you're at? And if it's no to all those things, what's the flip side? I mean, you could drive, depending on what market you're in, you know, you could put, potentially earn two racks a week or more. And But you know what's going to come with that. You got to be disciplined. You got to be self-reliant. You're going to have to set some goals. And if that's not you, maybe a job will be, <laughs> you know, the best for you. So yeah, go work uh, at a factory, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, or know. or something else. But if you ambitious and you know you tired of getting the results that you want, you know, because most people, uh, yeah, yeah. If, real quick, if you don't mind, like sharing, like what were you earning, uh, at the law firm and like Amazon, like oh we, man, <laughs> you ready? Oh yeah. my. God, the law firm was paying me eighteen dollars an hour. Now this is this is like three years ago, so minimum wage was different, right? Now everything is getting more expensive, and people are getting paid a little bit more because the inflation. But eighteen dollars an hour for the law office, and then the Amazonia warehouse was like sixteen point two five. I remember it very well, and. Man, oh man, every paycheck I get was two weeks of like a thousand and two hundred dollars and not enough for my so rent. about like six hundred a week. Yeah. But that's like man, that's like the the magic, you know, number from what I've seen. So yeah. Yeah. So if you, really if you yeah, so if y'all watching this, y'all the a, a job, factory job, whatever, or even if it sounds fancy, if you make it six hundred through uh, let's say a thousand a week, you could potentially, you know, double or triple your money. So let's, yeah, let's, let's not forget. To make. Let's not forget taxes as well as uh, medical insurance, like healthcare, four hundred one k, and like dental vision. All that stuff that had the benefits of Amazon was taken out of my paycheck. Yeah. So even if I was working hard and going for bonuses, it was still, let's say, not enough to afford the bills and that stuff. Right. No. Exactly. So, you know, so that's what's out there, ladies and gentlemen. So um, y'all can make the decision uh, on your own because we're going to keep this thing going, making two racks a week over here, uh, readapting, visioning, levitating, trying to become the best versions of ourselves. And we're going to figure this thing out each and every day. So uh, yes, shout out to Mason. Shout out to Thank the San Diego market. Uh, yes. Another winner of the two racks a week challenge. And yep. y'all know how I'm about to end it. Drum roll. Guitar. Piano. Violin. Ronnie Speed. Over and out. Mr. Two racks a week. Holla back. Peace. Racks a week, racks a week. Ronnie Speed, yeah, Ronnie Speed, Ronnie Speed, 60 hours.